Hmm. Ah, yes, much better. Mr. Fission, we need to have a talk. You are very quickly killing me. You are apparently spewing out non-stop radiation, and we need to have a talk about that. I am not quite ready to die yet. Hello everybody, I'm Martin. welcome to another episode of Glacial Awakening. And today, well, we aren't going to go fix Mr. Fission, but we do need to talk about what I discovered in between episodes. You see that radiation bar in the lower right corner that says 1 millirads a tick? That's orange instead of yellow. Yeah, that fission reactor is just constantly spewing out radiation. I hear it's even worse when you start reprocessing the fuel. I should not have built that inside my base. Turns out that the radiation in nuclear craft, or at least the old version, is really, really horrifying because it spreads through the whole chunk. It's even one millirad up here on the surface because it's in the same chunk. And it slowly spreads out to the surrounding chunks. And we can't actually make the radiation scrubbers yet to help mitigate that. So, uh... I need to move it, but I'm not moving it yet. We're also only at about half of the fuel spent that we need so far to reprocess it into DU plating to move forward on that. I'm also still blocked on the manganese because I went mining and I still only have four pieces total. I'm only halfway there and it's super tedious. So I guess we're going to do the other thing I dislike and let the sun go down and start working on astral sorcery. Well, except I'm not actually going to let the sun go down because I, uh, I need to go build some stuff. That said, before we start going building, I probably should uh, bring up the one other piece of astral sorcery that I realized as soon as I stopped filming the last episode. And that was that I realized I probably could automate the star metal ore pretty easily now that I had the auto placers and auto breakers. Turns out that's a lie. Uh, those actually did not work for this process because much like the hearthwell stuff, I had no easy way to tell when it changed states. So instead, I went with the old fashioned applied energistics two way of using formation and annihilation planes. There's a formation plane under this piece of ore and that puts up the iron that's in that box right there. And the annihilation plane then when it changes to star metal ore, it breaks it and puts it into the drawer up top. The annihilation plane will destroy any block placed in front of it, but only if it has some place to put it. In this case, that drawer, and only if that drawer is not full. Now, the question is, why do I have drawers here? And why do they not appear to be outputting anywhere? And that's because I don't have any way to get these back to my base because I'm far enough away that the braziers are out of range. They do have a max range. I also tried an ender chest, but there's only the vanilla ones here. And uh, you apparently can't attach pipes to it, which I, I don't think I've ever tried in the past, or if I did, I don't remember. I also don't have a silk touch pickaxe, and I forgot that if you break those without one, they just break and lose the eye vendor inside of it. So um, that was not great. So I have to manually come out here and get it, but at least it creates it on its own now. I just have to leave stuff behind and let it go to night. I also don't have energy coming out here. I now apparently have an empty capacitor that I needed to go refill, but um, we're doing okay right now. So this makes this part easier. So I'm not as blocked on the chassis as I thought I was. As to why we aren't dealing with the fission reactor today, it's because I also in a hurry realized I needed to solve the problem of the radiation or I was going to die from it. And I don't want to find out what happens when that happens because I don't know if I stay irradiated or not and just causes a death loop. I assume it probably wipes it, but I'd rather not take chances. So instead, I set up a fluid infuser to make Radaway, which is made from bioplastic, which comes from sugarcane in the manufactory, and Radaway fluid, which comes out of the fluid enricher from glowing mushrooms. And glowing mushrooms are just glowstone with mushrooms. And I can make mushrooms with the mutation paste. So I just made that, made a couple large ones, broke it up, repeated, used a bunch of glowstone, set up the fluid enricher, which requires ethanol, which we've got from our fermenter down in the basement that I was using f to make diesel fuel at one point, which I was just mainly bringing up here with a tank, and then some glowing mushrooms to make the Radaway, which then gets piped via conduit behind it into the fluid infuser to make the Radaway right here. So I have got a bunch. This mostly wipes out most of the bar when I use it. So that's good enough for now. Although I'm kind of worried about my crops upstairs because I believe it can irradiate them and stop them from growing. It might have some effect on my cows directly below me too. I don't know. I need to do it soon, but I just don't have the time to deal with it right now. All right, so I built a small floating island off to the side of my base and have not brought, built a proper bridge over to it yet because who's got time for that? And we're definitely not gonna discuss the fact that I built it from top to bottom instead of the easier way of doing it the other way around. But hey, at least I remember I had a builder's wand despite falling off the edge like eight times and nearly getting killed by zombies down there. But at least it's finished, right? 
progress. Anyhow, as a reminder, what the quest book wants us to do now is make the Starlet Infuser. However, to make the Starlet Infuser, we need the Celestial Altar. This, this right here, this is not a Celestial Altar. This is the one before it. So we, uh, we need to do something about this. And to make the Celestial Altar, however, is pretty simple. I have just been a slacker. So while it's nighttime, we'd better just load this up and get this start and fail to get this started. Okay, so uh, yes, you see this right here? How this line is not right here at the end? Yeah, that's a problem. We don't actually have enough starlight right here. Hmm. All right, so I guess what we're gonna have to do is set up some spectral relays to get extra starlight into our altar for now, which the main trick here is it requires a glass lens, which we don't have starlight infusion yet, so we're going to have to craft using aquamarine. Hopefully I can get by with only one of these because I don't really have room for the pedestals for them here, but we'll give it a try and we'll see. Okay, so I put the spectral relay down on this platform. It's just four chiseled and four marble arches on, and a sooty marble in the center. You put another glass lens on top of it and it will feed these blue and white sparklies over to the nearest altar. Now, if we look inside the altar, we now have enough power to make this. More than enough. This is actually quite a bit more than I was expecting from that one single relay. Hit it with our wand and it starts changing into the new altar type. And a new altar means we need a new platform because this does not work with this particular altar. Because this altar requires a slightly bigger platform with more sooty marble in the middle and actual bigger pillars now. Just gotta get fancy on us, huh? The upside is this next one we just continue adding on to as we upgrade now instead of having to rebuild it completely different than this one. So let me go pack all of this up and move it over onto that island over there. I would get a horrifying amount of snow as I get this set up, but I have it up here in the center of the island now. I also added uh, three more spectral relays around it, so there's all four feeding into it. And we now have it all properly set up, which means we can move on to the Starlight Infuser, which is just more really basic stuff because we already have the liquid starlight. We have tons of that, and the rest of it is mostly just marble. Easy peasy, and our, we are completely full on starlight, so those spectral relays are helping out a ton. I guess let's kick this off. And there we go. The Starlight Infuser, all easy peasy. Or is it? Because of course it's not. It requires a structure also, a not small structure at that. But I, uh, I don't have it in me to build another island right now. So I think we're gonna go put it back where the other one was over there for the time being. We are going to have to make another island for this, but uh, I, I don't wanna spend another hour plus doing another island right now, guys. All right, so I had to go mining for a bit more marble because I clearly did not have enough, but we've got this now all set up. I've also moved the light wall down here because this consumes the liquid starlight that's sitting around it as it gets used. It's actually really annoying to use until you can automate it much later in Astral Sorcery, except we don't need to go any later in Astral Sorcery, I don't think, with this pack for the most part. So, uh... I guess let's go do what it wants us to do and make a resonating gem, which is a normal aquamarine, and it has to be the astral sorcery one, not the other one that you find much in much more abundance. And let's start it off. And this will then draw in the starlight from the liquid starlight pools, and it may or may not use up some of it. You might see one of these recede a little bit. This is a giant pain to use until you get this automated with the chalice of whatever it's called. Which of course means I probably should automate this light wall and pump in radiant quartz into it and dump it into like, I don't know, a black hole tank or something to be used nearby here. But I guess it really depends on how many of these enhanced machine chances we really need, although I think we actually do need a bunch because it's used in all of the various mechanism machines. So that could be problematic. I guess that's more work I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to run an AE2 cable over here, and I just don't want to. But I think that's a problem for another day's R, because it's getting late, and uh, that island took more out of me than I want to admit to. Anyhow, if you found this episode interesting and entertaining, please consider a like or subscribe if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.